Hey everyone, since the season's starting soon, I thought it would be nice for me to show everyone some small details of the mix and match game manual. I know a lot of teams don't take the time to read through all the Q&As or even maybe read the game manual closely. So we prepared six rules that are really important to the game, but also really easy to miss even if you read the game manual. So I'll be starting off with the simplest rules and then I'll be ending off with the most important rules, the ones that actually have a really big impact towards your score. So first, we're going to look at a drive station change. So as you can see here, the game manual says that these are the drive team members. And you can see that they're actually on the opposite sides of the field. And this is the first time that Vex has ever had the drivers stand on opposite sides of the field. Um, and I think this is a really weird change because it does make it a lot harder to communicate. And Vex IQ is all about communication, right? They're literally called teamwork matches. And especially competitions tend to be really loud. And also with the MC talking, it might be really hard to hear your alliance talking to you. But I'll leave the opinions up to you guys. So make sure you drop your thoughts down in the comments. Now, secondly, we're going to go to the intent of the game section. Again, this is a completely new section for the Vex IQ game manual. And in this section, the GDC makes clear what they want to happen in this game, basically. And they reserve a right to change a lot of things, such as the game piece layout, the match loading rules, and the beam and goal part, which is the last part. It's kind of basically a different way of saying that they can change the scoring. So if we look here, they say, if we find that the more challenging types of goals are underutilized throughout the season, we may add new bonus opportunities or increase existing bonuses to incentivize using these goals. And again, I feel like these two changes are mostly caused by last year's Rapid Relay China loading since it's basically just destroyed the game. Now, number three brings us to a very easy to miss rule. Um, it's SG1. Starting a match, it says, at the beginning of a match, the ROA must be placed such that it meets all of the following criteria. The others are pretty much the same as last year. But if we look at point C here, we can actually see that for teamwork challenge matches, the team listed as team one uh, in the printed match list or the red team on robot events must place their robot in contact with the red goal. And then the blue one or team two will have to place it on the blue triangle goal. And although the competition will show your team's color when you get to the field and also on the printed match list, I feel like it's really annoying to always have to bring a photo or look at your printed match list and try to find your qualification or all of that. But don't be worried because soon we're going to be releasing our very own VaxIQ scouting app, which will let you know your schedule, the colors of your teams, as well as our very own score, which is customized to help you know how strong your alliance is. And make sure to join our Discord in the description to keep up with our app updates. But again, this part is basically completely new. We've never seen something uh, similar to this in previous games. So number four is actually even more important, especially to your mashes. Um, so we're going to go down to SC3. We're going to come back to this later, but we're actually just going to go down a bit uh, to the scoring examples. Um, so there's 10 scoring examples, but what we really want to focus on is 8, 9, and 10. Basically, um, if your robot is touching a scoring object at the end of the match, the object and any stack it's part of scores 0 points. So as you can see here, SE8, the pins in this example are nested together. So they should be counted normally, but part of the stack is in contact with a robot. So as you can see, this claw is touching um, the blue and the orange pin. And it says none of the pins qualify as connected. It should be a 16 point stack, but in the end, it's only two points for that um, robot in contact with scoring objects at the end of the match bonus. And if it's touching a beam, then all stacks connected to that beam will be completely invalid. So um, there's actually two scenarios that might happen for this. So one is like this, as you can see, um, there's a three stack beam right here. So this is worth 91 points normally. Um, but then you touch one of the stacks, right? And that basically just removes um, the 18 points. So then now it's only a 66 point stack. Um, but again, if you touch the beam here, every single stack that's connected to it become zero. So you can see before this would be a 91 point stack. But now it's just two points. 
So I think this is really important on strategies and especially with 180 mechs, if you're still clamping onto that beam at the end of the match, that's really bad. So this rule is kind of forcing you to like be more careful with the scoring objects. And I think this is really similar to full volumes SC1, which is that if you score any objects in the goal after the buzzer, then that entire goal is zero. And if we go back to SC3, we can see that they only say this in these small lines and they don't really have a direct like rule for it. And this makes us so that when you're reading the game manual, you might think, oh, I already know what the stack is counted as. So I don't need to read this and you kind of ignore this rule. Now I'm going to go to our robot skill challenge rules on page 50. If we look at this rule, RSC3, um, next page actually, it says the robot must be placed in contact with the structure of the red triangle goal at the beginning of the match and after the robot is reset. So this again is... Um, a pretty small rule, you know, it's a sub rule of um, this one. And I think this is also a pretty easy to miss rule. And another one is that the blue load zone is not used in robot skill matches and scoring objects may only be introduced into the red load zone. So again, these are both pretty easy to miss rules. I don't know if you guys missed it or not. Um, yeah, just basically, I'm just telling you guys to make sure you guys don't make any mistakes routing because starting off of the blue goal or using the blue load zone will make a really big difference in your score and also your route. So just make sure to not make these mistakes. But anyways, that's going to be everything we think is very easily missed in the game manual. If you guys think we missed anything or did anything wrong, uh, please make sure to drop a comment and for future game manual updates, we'll make sure to make recaps on those. If you guys think this video included any rules you had no idea about, please subscribe because it would mean a lot and we'll see you in the next one.